What's going on team? Sorry, I know exactly what you're thinking. You see it every week, on the week, same place, same time, you haven't been here. Well, this one took a bit of thinking. I'm making myself a CNC plasma table. All the computer, all of that stuff. It wasn't long ago, I stumbled across a channel called um, JD's Garage, based in America. And um, the mad scientists on that channel have managed to basically build a budget CNC plasma table for under, I think it was 600 bucks USD. It's obviously not gonna be that cheap here in New Zealand, but I thought it'd be a good test to buy the plans off them, buy all the gear and see how much this table actually costs. Cause I was having a look on the internet, ArcDroid, I think it was about four and a half thousand dollars. I was hoping this, I can get down to sub 1,000. So anyone could do it, you know, it's not, um, it's not out of reach for, for, for a lot of people. So whereas the ArcDroid or four and a half grand to just go and buy on a tool like that is unrealistic for a lot of people. So. If I can get this one done, under a certain amount, I'm going to be fucking stoked. So yeah, first step, cut all the steel, um, legs, frame, everything like that, because I've got a lot of work to do with all this 3D printing stuff. So, let's cut the steel. So, this is usually the part where I tell you what I'm cutting, how I'm cutting, and what size I'm cutting it to. But it's all in the plans, and I've linked the plans in the description below. I feel like if I did a full tutorial and cut list, I'd be ripping the boys off of JD's garage. So think of this more as a, as a walkthrough of how it's done. So there it is. The frame. You've got the four legs, you've got the y-axis, you've got the gantry, you've got the x-axis. It's all pretty straightforward. Once I've got all that cut, I'm going to drill some holes in it. And I can't do that here because I don't have a drill press. I could do it by hand, uh, but I'm lazy. So I'm going to head around to my old man's house. He's got a drill press and we're going to get it done. So uh, we'll head over there and um, get these holes drilled and put it into a frame so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Might be a bit confusing now, but give it some time and it'll make sense. Here we are in the old man's shed. The tool we're going to use today. And uh, we're just going to drill some holes. The team at JD's Garage have done a great job of making this project achievable for anybody. You don't need to be a super skilled welder or a super skilled engineer. You just got to have a bit of a brain on your shoulders and be willing to have a crack. Everything bolts together, makes it super easy to assemble and, and disassemble. And there's only one part you really need to weld, and that's not very structural at all, so anyone can do it. So while the old man drills that, I've got these 3D printed parts. A good mate of mine done them. And inside here, I wear these bearings. I got to the fins go through and they're also going to have grubs in the top. So you're going to push it back and down so you make sure you've got a lot of tension on it. I've made one up already, just here. So these are going to be the guide on the gantry. And then these are going to go here, and this is what's going to slide across the entire piece with the arm up here. So it's nice and simple. It's going to have eight bearings in each of them with washers on each side and these eight more pins that go through and these here are going to determine how far in or out that pin is going to be. I mean, it goes pushing down on it so it doesn't have any movement when, I'm, when it's on the gantry because you can't have any movement like this otherwise your, your torch is going to be bouncing up and down. So yeah, got to go put these in and it's a bit of a fiddly process with these washers but we'll get it done. The good part about this entire project as well is there's literally only one piece that you need to weld you're going to make up this and this is the, the gantry that goes along the y-axis so this is going to have bearings on either side like so and these are going to move or roll along as the motors drive them, the stepper motors drive them but yeah, so one piece that you need to make up and fabricate and this whole project is pretty awesome so if you're not very good at welding you can definitely get this done this project done. Got both of the bearing blocks made on the gantry, which is a 190 mil, 75 mil box. We've marked out all these holes, so we're going to drill them and tap them. They're an M5 thread, and then we'll be able to put these together and then mount this on the y-axis. So obviously, still not making sense. It will very shortly. Trust me. So when I started this project I was a little bit worried about the 3D printed stuff because I've never played in that space before. But it turns out it's pretty easy. The plans come with all the STL files for you to send to the 3D printer and start making it. 
I sent one to a mate who knows what he's doing, and he made it all for me in a couple of days. So there it is, all the holes drilled in it. M4, or four more drill bit to tap a uh, M5 tap. So we've got these little bolts that are going here and they're gonna help hold both of those guides. So yeah, I'll tap them and then I'll screw them on. So once I got everything drilled and tapped, I put all the 3D printed stuff on and then it was time to build the frame. There's only one slight deviation that I made from the plans and it was making it higher. The plans asked for 480 mil high, I wanted it a bit higher than that so I went 750 so I didn't have to bend over all the time when I'm on it. And this part of the project, putting the frame together, was the longest part and it took me about an hour and a half to get it done. So I skip over most of this because I don't really think you want to watch me rolling around on the floor trying to get these bolts in. But once we got the bolts in, the frame portion of the project is done. So there you go. We've got our X and our Y axis moving how we want it to and it's all level. Got to make a couple adjustments here to fit the motor in. But all in all, so far, it's working perfectly. The next thing is to mount the motors, mount the belt tensioners and go from there. So I'll see you on the next episode. So that's the first part of it done, the frame, the gantry. Easy. Now I've just got to wait for a few other things to get here from Amazon and then we'll get straight into the motors and the controls. That should be next week, so I'll see you then.